For a show about the sale of paper, The Office features a surprising lack of on-screen sales. So few, in fact, that I decided to rewatch the series, again, in order to crunch the numbers to find out who is the best salesperson in The Office. A couple of ground rules before we really get into this. We'll be comparing everyone in two regards. Percentage of successful sales versus failed sales, and raw positive sales numbers, so the size of the sale doesn't matter. If someone steals a sale from someone else, we'll count that as a positive sale for the person stealing and a loss for the person who has their sale stolen. Next, if we hear someone talking and discussing products with a potential client, and we don't hear whether they do or don't make the sale, we'll count that as a positive sale. And finally, we won't be counting Clark or Karen because they're only around for one season each. And before we really get into this, make sure you subscribe down below if you like this video and want to see more like it. The first season actually goes relatively quickly. Michael, at the beginning of the series, makes a sale that Jim failed to make, Dwight steals a sale that Jim is unable to close, and we overhear Stanley discussing paper with a client, so we'll give him a sale for that. So here's where everyone is following the first season. The second season passes by pretty uneventfully aside from one particular instance. Season 2 is episode 14 where Michael starts a sales contest. We see that Michael appears to be in last place and the other three salespeople all appear to be tied or at least close to it. So we'll give the other three people three sales and Michael two. Jim won't be counted into this because he isn't there that episode. And here's the updated standings after season two. Now season three. The biggest thing in early season three is when Michael sends out all the salespeople in teams of two to try and make sales. Andy and Michael go out and Andy butchers the sale. Ryan and Stanley team up together and despite Ryan not doing well, Stanley's laughter in the car later seems to indicate that they still managed to make their sale. Phyllis and Karen undergo makeovers to make their sale and Dwight and Jim also make their sale. Later in the season, we hear Dwight sell two printers while working at Staples. We'll be counting that towards Dwight's total sales. And here's where everyone is following season three. Season four is a big year in a couple different ways. In the second episode of the season, Michael and Dwight set out to try and win back several clients that they had lost by giving those clients each gift baskets. They fail to reclaim six clients before Michael, following his GPS, drives his car into a lake. Can't mean that. There's a lake there. I think it knows where it is going. This is the, the lake. machine knows. This is the lake. Stop yelling at me. No, it's Stop up yelling. yelling. There's no lake here. So we'll be giving both of them six failures. The very next episode is Dwight going up against Dunder Mifflin Infinity, trying to outsell the website while slowly coming to believe that the website has become sentient. For this, we'll only be counting the sales and failures that we see on screen because we don't know how much each sale is going for. Those are the two biggest episodes of the season in terms of sales but we do see Jim securing a sale later in the season after several attempts on a golf course. We'll only be counting this as a sale because he manages to close it. And here are the percentages following season four. Season five is another very busy season. Dwight and Jim both make sales in earlier episodes and Dwight and Andy each fail a sale. This is around the time that Michael, Pam, and Ryan launched the Michael Scott Paper Company. Pam makes the first official sale of the MSPC. The next few episodes, there are mentions of clients being stolen and stolen back, and the bids for Dunder Mifflin customers. Pam steals a customer from Phyllis, Michael steals a client while making Dwight listen, Ryan also steals a client from Dwight, which he later loses. Jim also mentions losing a client to the MSPC. Here's where everyone lines up following Season 5. In Season 6, we don't see any actual sales until Episode 8. In this episode, Michael and Jim go to try and make a sale together, but Michael ends up falling into the koi pond. Or rather, Jim lets Michael fall into a koi pond. Oh! He purposefully leaned away and let you fall. Oh, man. Going off the fact that Michael later gets billed for the fish he killed while falling into the pond, we'll assume that he and Jim do not make the sale. Pam and Andy also got to make some cold calls. They get a maybe on one of the two we see, but later we hear they didn't actually make any sales, so we'll take off two for both of them. Later in the season, Pam mentions doubling her sales from 2 to 4, and Michael makes a sale to Curves. In Season 6's episode 17, both Jim and Pam take advantage of Pam being pregnant to make simultaneous sales. Dwight then tries to talk about his personal life with the customer and fails to make the sale. We see Jim make two sales over the next few episodes and we overhear Andy in the middle of a sale that we'll give him credit for. In Season 6, episode 23, Jim and Pam are trying to make a sale together but Pam ultimately lets Michael in on the sale instead, so we won't be counting this one way or the other for Pam. Jim and Michael ultimately make the sale. Here's a look at the numbers after Season 6. Season 7, in comparison to the previous seasons, is pretty uneventful. In Season 7, Episode 2, Pam fails to make a sale, and we later hear of Stanley making one. In Episode 5 of that season, Jim, Michael, and Dwight try to make a joint sale and fail. 
and Jim makes a sale a few episodes later in episode 9. In season 7, episode 14, Andy holds a seminar and tries to sell to the entire group. He ends up with three successful sales, but because he was attempting to make a bulk sale, we won't be counting any of the negatives. The very next episode, Jim and Michael make a joint sale. Later in the season, we overhear Phyllis making a sale and Andy manages to close a sale after D'Angelo nearly derails the whole thing. This is also the last season where we have Michael as part of the group, so this will be his final number. Now let's get to season 8, which is also pretty uneventful. In the very first episode of the season, we see Jim making a sale when Aaron calls Pam over to reception. The next episode is a big one. Andy, in an attempt to double the branch's growth, announces that he will get a tattoo if everyone can get 5,000 points in a system he made up. While he initially believes this to be an impossibly high number, the office reaches it in one day. We overhear Jim and Dwight making sales and see Phyllis and Stanley working uncharacteristically hard as well. Going off of the fact that they reach the goal in one afternoon, we'll give each of the salespeople, minus Andy, two sales each. In the episode after that, Phyllis loses a client because the entire warehouse staff wins the lottery and quits. As a result, her shipment never goes out. Because of the nature of how she loses her client, we won't be counting that against her. In episode 23, Jim and Dwight make simultaneous sales. Later in the episode, they're going to meet a potential client, but Andy gets there first and makes a sale. That does it for season 8, so let's move on to the final season. In the cold open in episode 3, the man pretending to be Jim mentions that he closed a sale the previous day and is confident that he closed another sale, based on the messages received. In episode 7, Phyllis mentions that Dwight failed to make a sale to a woman after he kept referring to her as Gina. Later in the episode, Pam and Dwight go to make a sale to Jan. They eventually make the sale after offering Clark up as a kind of human sacrifice. In the next episode, Pam purposely drives away a customer in order to get a complaint card to finish off the card tower that the office is working on. In Season 9's Episode 11, Dwight and Clark make a sale to a father and son suit company. In Episode 15, Dwight goes into Andy's office twice to sign sales forms. Andy returns from his trip this episode and immediately loses the Scranton White Pages account that Dwight and Pam managed to land. We'll be counting that against Andy, not Dwight and Pam. The following episode, Dwight drugs Stanley and takes him on a sale, which they managed to make. In Episode 22 of the season, Jim has Dwight sign a sales form. That means he obviously made a sale. And finally, in the finale, we hear Dwight say that they managed to re-land the Scranton White Pages, so we'll attribute that sale to him again. And now for the moment of truth. Looking at the final numbers, we see that Stanley is in fact the best salesman in the office, at least percentage-wise. If we're looking at just raw sales made, the numbers shift drastically, with Dwight coming out at number one. But anyways, this has been 10K Bill, and we're working on some new stuff for you that we're in the very early stages of pre-production on. So be on the lookout for a pilot in the future. Comment down below what you'd like to hear me talk about next. And as always, make sure to subscribe for all your entertainment related content.